in a market that is absolutely flooded with choice right now which is a good thing i reckon there's plenty out there for you to choose from and wedges are a major part of the game and it really depends what you're looking for but right now ping have just brought out what was a product that really stood out in its class it's very much for me a player's type wedge it's a forge wedge which is really interesting to me it looks absolutely superb and you can probably see alongside it i'm reviewing the i-59s as well it sits extremely well in the bag with a set of them things so we're down at a par three course just at the back of four golf and what i'm going to do is i'm going to try some sort of full wedges which for 54 degrees which is the one i've got in the bag is going to be around 100 yards and then we'll try some short stuff in and around the greens and see how this thing performs in the hands of an average golfer is it a player's wedge or is it suitable for everyone we'll soon find that i expect I was just interested to see whether or not there's two shots you'll see overlaid here. It's a 54 degree wedge, don't forget that I've got in hand. Uh, played what is a normal sort of from there for me, will be more of a chip and run style shot. And again, released quite good, not the best of shots from me, but then to play from exactly the same position and be able to lay the club face open a little bit without it feeling uncomfortable or sort of sometimes for me, or I think one of the big improvements in wedges of late is that ability to lay them open and not feel as though the sort of club is not on the line and aim that you want so it sits very naturally behind the club face so it's easy to do that and again you've just seen that ball pop up high totally different ball flight so plenty of flexibility within the club face itself and the way it sits on the ground which again is a, is a major plus isn't it another reason why you'll have a wedge in your bag is often to get out of some uh, heavy stuff certainly around the greens from the position you might find yourself certainly as an average golfer and what I want to know from the lie I've got here, it's an okay lie, it's not great, but what I want to know is what kind of control I've got. One thing the Glide Wedges did incredibly well on their previous um, release was they performed extremely well in wet conditions. That's something they've done very well, ping wedges. And again, control from the rough. So we're not, like I said, it's not the worst lie in the world, but it'll be just be interesting to see how much this releases from this type of lie. It's popped out okay. You see it release. Greens are fairly firm here. This par three course is still lively enough in terms of the greens. It kind of, I think you've got to have a level of expectation. It didn't do any different than I would have expected it to. It came out of the rough. There was obviously grass. Well, you can see where it hit there, actually. You can see plenty of uh, grass on the club and grass between ball that, uh, that causes that problem in terms of spin or control rather. So, we didn't learn a great deal, if I'm honest with you, from that shot. It did exactly as we probably expected to, with no magic miracle in terms of being able to stop that ball from that kind of lie. So when you buy a wedge, I think what you've got to do right now is decide what is it that you want from it? What are you looking for? What are the key features? So for me with this glide wedge, the big deal is that it's forged. So straight away, I'm a golfer that likes to have great feel in terms of irons. So that ticks a major box, but then you're looking at kind of like profile. And you're thinking, well, this is very much a player's profile in terms of its size. But what I will say they've done really well with this, they've packed a little bit of mass in and around the backside of it that you don't really see. So it sits in the category now, although it's called a glide, it's a very much a pro wedge. I think it's a very playable wedge and it's got forgiveness in there, if you like, because of that sort of mass behind the ball. So I think it appeals to quite could appeal to a wide range of golfers who are looking for a number of different things so yeah it'll appeal to a player but also appeal to a player who wants more of a game improvement type wedge and i think that's a big deal what ping have done there So 
we've just moved forward off the uh, tee. It plays 130. This is probably, uh, that's a little bit too far, but I think we've got about sort of 110 in us downwind. So this is a very much obviously a full wedge, but something that uh, you're going you're gonna to be looking to play. Interesting to see the sort of contact and sound between uh, club and ball. That's a really nice feel, picks the ball up really well. Actually got the yardage a little bit longer than what I expected it to be, but we take that. But I think the key for me was the sound and feel. I mentioned it in a previous clip, it's a big deal for me. and It's something that Ping have got that others haven't in this category, and that's that forged feel and uh, what resonates ultimately in sound. So yeah, loving that. things is this is classed as a player's wedge and I've already said about the back end having a little bit of meat into it they've done really well in terms of when they sit in a dress from the top line it looks like a player's uh, wedge but what I will say they've done this really good job and we've seen it a lot is this kind of like chamfered back line which really makes it look very very neat in a dress but in fact hides a little bit of mass that's in here and I think it's not the widest sole unit if we look down at the sole it's kind of uh, but it's, it's not a blade like it's not a player's like it's got a bit of mass there and i like the fact that they do that when it's sat there though the big noticeable difference sort of behind the ball is the heel to toe length and the actual shaping of it that's when it becomes very much more into that player's category so it's shorter in terms of the distance that we would normally see between like i said a player's and a game improvement type iron it's also got a sort of very rounded type shape on the whole wedge and i think again it's very much unique to their look that they've got going on right now because i think to be fair again it's classic in its looks but it's very much a pin glide wedge that you've seen before and that is again it's something that's a, is it going to appeal to you or is it not? Because it is noticeably smaller in a dress than a lot of wedges that are out there. So a couple of shots here played from what is really light rough um, but again you're not expecting this is a half a shot one of the most difficult shots to kind of get some control on and you'll see from both them pitch on the green but still release that little bit and I think it's a reminder that let's not kid ourselves that it's it's not there ain't no miracles within these wedges there ain't no things that are spin machines this idea that you know something's going to come along with grooves that are effectively maybe a little bit claiming to be a little bit different than those on other wedges but effectively it is all going to be about the quality of the strike that you and I put on them and coming from that kind of rough just that light rough you'll see again like I said there's still that little bit of release there and you can't forget that when you're buying these things like I said there's no miracles out there so a nice shot to finish with I think we'll leave it there there's only so much you can do in terms of wedge reviews and we've looked at it in a number of different scenarios and like I said there's no magic ones, it all really does rely on your kind of strike. You see it there, that last shot was probably the best representation of a full shot which sat and grabbed. It's coming in from the right kind of elevation. Um, some of the shorter three-quarter shots are always going to be difficult control. But if I was to assess the kind of what they've done, they've produced a really good looking wedge, first of all. It, the, the, the massive tick in the box for me is the feel from it. It feels superb and sounds really good. The negative is, if there is any, it's just that size and profile. I suppose a negative in the fact that it doesn't appeal to the masses, but if you're that kind of player and that appeals to you, it's a massive bonus. But I still feel that if you can get over the kind of looks in terms of the smaller profile, there's plenty of help and uh, assistance in there to play it as a game improvement type wedge, if you like. So, you know, this pro title that it's given, I'm not really sure it's uh, sort of excluded itself from a number of golfers out there that'd be perfectly fine in playing that wedge in the bag so that's me done as ever thank you for watching don't forget if um if you're looking for wedges at the moment and you've seen a few of late that have come out are these going to be on the wish list that's the thing i would like to know from you and also maybe another good one for me because as i've gone round here testing this wedge it's thinking 
how many times or how often do you change your wedge and another key factor is how often do you clean your grooves on the way around your game of golf because that's another interesting bit for me right thanks as ever for watching and i'll uh, see you all very soon because we're carrying on and i'm going to hit some more shots with these i-59s which hopefully you've watched that review already and they're pretty impressive too